Go. Was? All the Ashmas. Mm -hmm. All the Ashmas. Good. Okay. We just loosen the bug up. Hang on. Inside, outside. Stretching up, bowing the back a little bit, bending the knees all the way down. Nice and slow, pulling up through the center. Nice deep breath. Down. Go down to the side. Right up. Okay, that side. Let's go to the head. 
stretching to the chest. And up. To the left, uh, to the right, and to the shoulder, the side, a little bit pressure on the top, or a little bit towards the front of the body. And release it. Pressing from the back, just pulling the neck long. So the hands come to the front, pressing forward. And then just rolling the body down, curving all the upper spine, and then just release it, draw it up, pull the body up. And then again, draw the body down, pull the body up, and release it. Okay, so working the shoulders. Just for the shoulders and the shoulder blade, and have the hands here so they can touch palm to palm, one over the other. Curl the body forward a little bit, a little bit like this one. Curl the body into it. And you're gonna bring the arms back. Yeah, pull the shoulder blades, like you're pinching the shoulder blades at the back. And then curl them back, palm to palm. Stretching the arms out a little bit. And then back. And one more time, in. And, and release it. Okay, let's work in the hips. Yes. And the other way. Three minutes. The body sit. And just very gently rolling, looking over the rear shoulder. Nice deep breath out as you go through it. And then just let the body roll down. Yes, one way and the other way. Yeah. And go back to the center. It's working the legs side to side. Hold them on side. And the side. Okay, 
feet a little bit wider, just drawing the feet forwards, hands on the same line. And just draw the hands over to one foot. And then over to the other side. And again. One more time, walking the hands over. Back to the middle. And then from here, just let the elbows down to the ground. You can. Very gently just walking the hands forward, just until you're kind of in the fingertips, in the ground. So you draw the hips back, lengthen through the spine. Pull the tailbone back. And just slowly drawing the hands back, bring the feet back together. Uh, and just sit into the forward fold. The arms dangle down. And then pressing the palms into the ground, releasing the knees to do so. You need to. Just pulling the legs straight, opening the back of the knees. Draw the hands up, the body. And just have to pull the body up nice and gently. There. Over there. Good. And then just loosen the knees off. Just roll them, small circles. Stretching them back. Bending down. And back. You can also pull the toes up as well. Take the drawing towards the face. Just increase a little bit on the back. And sink it down. Good. Good. Let's go to the feet. Yes, we're rolling the ankle joint. Working the toes a little bit. And the ball of the foot. And then just holding it out, straighten the leg. And just working in circles. And then pointing and pulling the toes up. Pointing, pulling it up. And just shake it up. And the other side. Working the ankle. And the toes. And the ball of the foot. And then straighten the foot. Working in circles. In the way. And then pointing, pulling the toes up. And just shake it out. And just feet together, just pulling up onto the toes. Very slowly, just drawing the body back right down. Pressing the heels, pulling the toes up a little bit. And then up. And slow descent down. Shift the weight onto the heel. Up. Down. Okay. Just work a little bit for the arms up. 
for the wrist. It's going to nick your hand over the top. And the other side. Into Kotegaishi. And the other side. And Nikyo, thumb over the top. And change. Push. Into Sankyo. Push. And change. Making the fingers, throwing them back. And change. Just using the forearm, just on the fingers, just nice weight onto the finger, just drawing it back. Don't push back onto it. Just roll weight into it. There, on the side. Just extending the fingers out. Starting slow, full extension. And then just pulse it a little bit faster. Okay, closing into fists. First few nice and slow, really folding the whole hand into it so right. and it's a little bit faster a lot faster just pulse it right. and just start to bring the fist close to the body just through at the side feel the weight entering the ground Uh, and just the last few, just hold it, release it, hold it nice and tight, release it, hold it, release it. Last one, hold it, release it. Shaking the wrist out. And here. In the arms. And get the whole body going. Okay, good. Take a bulk game. Let's see. So awesome. Thank you. Okay, great. We'll just start straight coming to this position here. Feet, heels together, nice and grounded. Straight long in the spine, shoulders back. Oh, hello, who's that? Ah, Serena. Good. And then just very slowly, just coming into the Kamai. So just taking your time with it, drawing the whole body together. Feel the whole body moves together. Coming into the Kamai, nice and settled. Just feel the sword really anchoring into the posture. And then slowly drawing it back. Ankles, heels touch. Toes pointing just a little bit out, swords just at the side. Feel the shoulders spreading all the time, nice and wide. Slowly in. And slowly back for standing. And out.
just a few. Good. Okay, just feel from that position, you want to feel the real connection between the hips and the hands. So just hit nice and loose, feel that the sword's really connecting. So just very light movements. Just work the hip a little bit. It can be up and down, it can be side to side, but just feel without moving the feet. Just this connection between the hips and the hands. Very flexible. And especially in the shoulders, not really tight at all. And the hands also really very, Lightly connecting him with the sword. Yeah. Especially in this case, really feel the elbow joint nice and free. And also the knees. So just check through the whole body. Very, very subtle movement. Really feel that from the hips, from the core of the body, right to the tip of the sword and right into the ground, all the movements just passing through it. Very, very subtle movement. And so. And then just nice and slow, do the same thing, but just work into a raise. So start to move the front foot as if you're working into the first of the Just take your time with it. So really work your way up into it. You can really feel this chain connecting the whole system from the hips, right the way through. And just work your way up to it gradually, drawing the sword up, drawing the sword up. Don't think about cutting and don't think about raising the sword either. Just think about drawing up through the body, drawing up, settling the body down. Just really feel that action pass through the, especially into the spine as you go. And just work your way into it so that you're getting to the spine and just drawing it down. And don't think so much about cutting as you draw the sword down. Just think about the body settling into the ground and into the hand. Again, especially now the knees and the elbows, let them be nice and free. The whole joint system should feel like it's got space in it. Don't want to feel that it's locked up in any way. And you can start to let the sword just drift all the way down to the ground. All the time the hips, really leading the movement. There we go.
Nice. So just placing the sword now. Every time, just come back into the Kamai. So you just wedge in through the, through the Kamai and then draw to the back. Just press the sword down. So you're just placing it into the, into, with a feeling of placing into the ground. And then just let the hip to wedge back. Very subtle again. And find the back. Place the sword down and then just let the hip settle back. There. There. Nice and calm. Really focus on the joint systems free all the time. And then just slowly work into the focus. Yeah. And keep the same sensation that you're really allowing the sword to really root into the ground. So try and feel that the sword's just draining through. So gravity just pulls it down. And then all you want to do is just align behind it and catch it, just at that right point. So really looking for a very grounded, very clear movement. With also no distortion in the arms as, as the sword's kind of descending. Just let the sword descend. Straight through and down. Straight through and down. And just experiment with it. You can do the drag through, placing, or finishing. Really feel the body's totally coming into the ground, aligning right behind the sword, and with the feeling being underneath it at the end. There. Just watch one thing in this case, with the left hand, just watch one thing, the left hand can do too much, especially in this end part. So there's sometimes a feeling like that happens. So this is really exaggerated. But yeah, that, where it starts to kind of pull up through the body. This will really pull the body up as well. So it will, it will the, the movement will pull it up through the shoulders. So in this case, really feel that the center and the left hand is really connecting here, this. So try and align the center really to that left arm. Oh, it's a bit tight. Yeah. And then from here, just get the feeling that that snaps on. So the left hand doesn't so much drag up as you go. Just have the feeling that it descends down and catches. It descends down and catches. But the wrist is mobile through it, so it's going to do that through it. But it doesn't. the arm doesn't do that drag up through it. So just get the sense that it's going to descend and catch. Descend and catch. Whilst keeping the articulation nice and free. So I don't want the grip to tighten the articulation in any way. Yeah. 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 
You just want a cut that's nice and clean. There we go. There we go, nice. Great, and then we're going to zinc off. So just take your time with it again. Find the ground here and then release it to the back. Release it to the back. Really feel the feet are nice and pliable in and out of the ground. Yeah, just watch in this case, there's one thing that can happen is, is that I'm using the, the arms in this way as you go into the rotation like this. I'm pulling the sword over the back, pulling the sword over the back, and then it feels like this. This is really heavy on the body because the body's going through a rotation, which is actually very tricky for the shoulder. So really feel this is like a cocky movement. So you've got this position and then let it go. So let, this, let the hands follow the center rather than the center pulling their arms around this way. Feel that the hands just flow with the center. So imagine you've got like a ball or something like this, you just roll it over, roll it over, but you don't do that. You do like Yeah, think about these kind of cocky movements. So the hands always working with the center. It's never really, it's never gonna be left behind. Also, if you think the clearest example is kind of hand If you leave the arm behind during the rotation, then you've got to pull it. So think about the arms always coming with the center. So they're always gonna stay in that kind of alignment with the center, although it's flexible. But just watch, look, yeah. Then they get, start to get pulled behind. Just play it a little bit. So the arms come with you. And then the sword comes with you too. Ah, there we go, it's really nice. There we go. Nice. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, and then the danger of this is always a danger in this kind of training because what, the, what I then try and do is pull the arms into the center. So then the arms get pulled in, contracted, pulled in, contracted. So if, you, if you're if you starting with the arms and thinking to draw them to the center, they will pull in like this. And it's like Moro Tadori or something like this. The defensive to do this, and then I've lost the extension. And then I need to find it again at the end. But just think all the time that the, the extension, although it's flexible, it's moving through the space, it's, it's always going to be on. So think that the extension from this position stays on. There. There. But there's really, and there's really no pulling to the center. Just the center rotates and the arms come with it, with the extension. There. There. Somewhere there. Just look for that. Keep the extension on. Especially in that rotation. Yeah, there we go, there we go. That's it. There we go. Yes. Nice. And just take it, take it into hapogi. So you've got these big rotations now and just keep in that same sense. So just take it in. You can start with four or go straight into the eight. Two, big rotation around. 
really keeping this idea of the arms, the arms come with the center. Everything goes together. Seven, eight, and back. Really likes how to finish at the end. Very nice. Good, we're going to number five. So just do two cuts together from the right side. And in, back. And then just taking your time, really draw back. So really take your time with it. Again, you want the center to be really leading the arms. As the arms go together. The center presses in, the arms go. So just look for this kind of coordination again. And really now pressing the body forward with the step. So letting the weight really land into the ground forward. Forward. Just play a little bit in this case. So when you go through, really think that the hands are going really soft into the motion. So they're really going supple through it. So the same movement we do when we do the first subversive, so you're really releasing through the grip, coming down, releasing into the motion. So think as soon as the sword goes into motion, you're going to be releasing into the grip. So it's much more about the connection with the sword and the alignment with the with the structure of the arm through the sword than it is with holding onto the sword. And basically clinging on to it. What I don't want to do is like these kind of things where I'm being pulled forward with it. And especially this way, <clears throat> you don't have to open the hand. So if I can keep the softness in the shoulder, I don't really need to alter the grip. But what helps to really soften the shoulder is, is really releasing the grip as you go. So I'm not overly focused on trying to manipulate the bucket with the hands. So just focusing on the structure of the arm and how that coil is passing through into the sword without having to feel like I'm doing something here with the wrist. But really feel that like that whole movement comes from the hip into the sword, hip into the sword. And it can help really to just release the hands, release the grip as you go. Think about scissoring through the grip. The hands are really kind of scissoring onto the sword. Uh, uh, 
That's it. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, and if you want to explore that kind of feeling as well, you can just take the feet shoulder width and just play with this kind of motion. So you want to play with a real kind of softness through the hands. There. And again, the, the key thing is what's happening in the hip into the sword. So it should feel very, very light. I don't want the sword to kind of feel very heavy in the body as it comes in, which means I'm basically adding tension to the arms and throwing the structure out. So really get this sensation like that. Yeah. Yeah, and the hands are really relaxed. Releasing, relax, releasing. This is really key later for, for, for any kind of speed going into the kind of cut. You want to really feel like the, the cuts are kind of released through the structure rather than uh, that. You really feel something quite light with it. You can work it just on this on the spot. Just work it into the cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. Um, yeah, and when you do it on the spot, we'll also tell you to tell you about how you're using the arms as well. So if you're using the arms in a way like this to pull this all back. It will really be clear when you do this on the spot. So the, the arms will, the arms and the elbow will kind of go in this direction. Think that what you're doing is actually out, out this way, this way, rather than that, that way. Think that you're doing this. So the arms are there. The arms are always extending from the body, but try not to go into these kind of positions where the body basically gets crunched up, especially the shoulder gets, gets tight here. Think about that kind of point in the shoulder. It's not really <coughs> You want it to be out, down, extended through the motion, through the motion. Very similar to these kind of jail movements we do as well. You don't want to crunch the shoulder, shoulders up. Think all the time, I kind of went through the shoulder blades. There, there, there. Come into that position. Nice and wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, there we go, good. Good. You want to be long and wide. There we go. Okay, just work with six and seven freely. So just working off a ski, so whichever way you cut, you can cut right side or left side, just come into the ski this way. And again, really feel that you're kind of keeping this feeling of width through the shoulder blades, especially as you go into the left side. Come in here and play with six or seven, stepping through or just cutting on the, thrusting on the same side. And just play a little bit with it. You can do Zengo, six steps with it. Just explore this transition into the ski. There. 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 There.
You can just do a set with this where you do all, you do both sides of six and then you do seven. So we'll do it as a set and then you can make it fluid so it flows into each other. So very simple, you come back, cut with a yokman, right side thrust, and then left side, left side here. And then from this position, you're gonna rotate from the back into the back with a slice and then stepping in, right side, left side, and then just coming back. So it's nice and simple. You start with the yokman, one, Ski two, three, Yokomen, ski, slice back, cut in, thrust in. Just take each step nice and strongly grounded. From here, slice, step, thrust. And then going back to the posture. There we go. Yeah, and then you start to bring it together as a kind of sequence. Let now every cut and thrust fall into each other. So use the thrust as a kind of pause. So you've got now the cut thrust go together. So cut thrust together. It's a kind of break at the end. And then step in thrust in this way. Yeah, let's let the, the strike and the ski blend into each other now. Or right off each other. They just kind of feed each other. The you come in into the ski, slice, jump on the ski, goes there. Yes, take them together now. And you can stick at that level, or you can, in this case, just start to make it a little bit more fluid now. So think that the, the slice at the back is now a pause in between. You can flow straight through it, but just gives you a little bit of a pause between. So think now what you're doing is you're going straight into it. This, 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 this. And then from here, this. Go straight in. So fill those kind of sequences to the front and then the rotation. Reduce one kind of sequence. 
So the hitch rate press through. Roll to the back. Press through. It's got a very subtle kind of feeling, but it's almost a feeling like you're just walking through the fall, but you're really engaging the hips and the core through the through the movements. But so you've got now this. This coming into just a little bit more kinanaga. Just play with that last three sequences. So you're in the left side here. Just play with this rotation. So you've got the rotation slice. You're coming, skip. And just each time, see if you can make it a little bit more flexible each time. So what you want to feel is that the, the movement feeds into the net. There, there, there. So there's really kind of feeling from the, the impulse from the ground sends you into the next movement. So this, this, this. Goes right into it. You start the left side. This, this, this. Again, don't worry so much about the precision in the cut and the, the kind of power from the cut. <clears throat> you want to really kind of shift into a different way of using the hips in the center, which is much more fluid. Much more. Yeah. You want to feel like it really just flows into each it into itself. Yeah, these kind of moves, especially when we go into this kind of kinetic area work, are, are tricky because we basically spend a long time doing static work, which basically glues the arms to the center or glues the hands and the feet together. So everything begins to move together. And that's good for connection work because it's a start. But if I get stuck in that, it's very hard to kind of make the, make the hand work fluid. So this kind of flexible training is a bridge between it. But when you go to this kind of stage, it's even something else because you've got to basically have the hands in a very flowing manner around the center. So the center's got to be, the, the arms have got to be unstuck totally. So the, 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 the arms need a real flexibility, which is, which is not what we do in the, in the static. Come, come, this kind of feeling. You've got to feel like a really kind of flowing through the system, coming through this way. So just play with it. Do it in really simple movements. You can just do this cut and the ski, but it's just trying to get this quality of something a little bit more fluid or totally fluid. It should feel totally kind of fluid through the motion. It shouldn't feel, it's stuck at any point. So the center's kind of free to press through the through the arms. There we go. You want to feel the sort of little bit kind of living in the hands. Kind of flow. There we go. There we go. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Great. Good. And then you want the same in the empty handed work. So we'll just work with Tai Henko. It's a very simple movement. Just working with the basic pattern. So you've got the basic where we're really coming here, here. So that you, you, as you return with the body, really sinking the body in, finding the rotation. Really split it into two extension or even three movements. This movement 
really extending in, in, and then the rotation. Really taking the time to settle the body. Get all the kind of movement practice, all the, the fluid work, really relies on this kind of static training as a kind of base. And the key point is really to get the body to settle and the hands to begin to express the hip work. Really feel the hands and hips working together. Ah, uh, good. Good. And then if you take this in a kind of flexible manner, just feel that from this very static position, you then coil the body through. It's got a much more flexible thing, especially in the spine. So really feel it pass through the hips into the spine. This. So the spine's a kind of mediator between the, the hips and the hand. The hips, the spine needs to be really flexing through the motion. So it's got something very flexible in the spine as you do it. Yeah. And hopefully this is going to pass into the hands. There, 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 there. You also want something heavy in it as well. So you want to keep the base from the key on practice and the weight from the key on practice. You don't want it to become very light. Good, and the next step from this, you can do that, you know, in a way the Kinagari form has two forms. You've got the variation where you, you come in at the, the person attacks and you flow through this way. The other variation is where you come through and you flow with the movement and you come into these kind of positions. So this is a much more fluid version. Try play with both just kind of going into the motion just the, the last few minutes. Just go from here and get the sensation that the arms are really transmitting the sense work. Get it something very flexible happening in the footwork and the hip. So something really, really flexible. This is really a different kind of thing from the kind of static training where you're doing a kind of simple step work, footwork. You're really allowing the footwork to be very, very pliable in this case. And the hands need to have a kind of, um, the hands need to have a kind of flexibility again. The, the easiest way to think about this is think about the, the arm extending further than it does. So it doesn't stop at the fingertips, it goes beyond it. So there's a really a feeling of a sensation out, out, out. So think about flowing out. Always these key, de key, key definitions of key also involve these kind of water hose. So kind of water gushing out of a, of a hose. There are always these kind of classic explanations, but you want to basically let the feeling extend beyond the hand. Yeah, yeah, just watch this. The, if you do that, just watch this when you do this. If you basically watch the handle break the structure down, the, the, all, everything will kind of collapse out. There's, that collapse, there's a great image of a sensei doing time hand cover. You always want this feeling of extending out. So reach out also with the vision as well as you go. So you don't want to be curling through. This will just end up with the body kind of coiling into itself. But think about the, the body's also expanding out this way. This here. So it's really got a kind of expansive quality. In the same way when you do time anchor in the base, you finish with a kind of taking on a different view to the back, but really open. Yeah, not crunched down. Yeah, this way. Yes, the last few. Ah, that's it. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. 
Very correct. I find this technique almost impossible to do with a partner because one thing is this stuck habit from the tiny ankle base like this, and the hips are basically locked with the hands. So you end up doing something like this. And the more I do that, the more I go around with it, the more the shoulder locks up. So I feel also when you're doing this, that the, the arm's very light. So it's got this kind of flexibility, fluidity to it. You see side senses, a lot of the videos, when he does the technique, he does them like this. He does the whole technique like this. So it, it's really showing you that the joint system's very free. So feel all the time when you do this, the joint system's actually free. I guess it's really not about following a, a set form now because you're actually flowing with the feeling rather than kind of going into a set form. So really allow that kind of structure to change as it goes. It stays really, really fluid, flexible. And you want that same kind of feeling when we go into the kind of Keenan Agari techniques. You want that same kind of suppleness in the structure. Here we go. Great. Oh, that's it. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. That's great. Great. Okay, we'll stop there. Us. Domo. Arigato. Great. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you very much.